Okay, so yesterday I um, put out a video, or not video, a, a uh, post with this little diagram I had done. I don't know if polka dot nodes are the right name, but what I'd like to do is go through what this diagram is and what it means um, by talking about how this all fits together. It's actually quite involved and I'm going to include in the uh, in the notes the uh, the article that goes into this in fairly deep, goes in fairly deep in, into this process uh, and um, so you can, if I miss something it'll explain it. We're gonna, we're gonna be covering some of this stuff more because I don't not covering the entire article. So, first of all, let's just briefly say what these things are. So, you have the co the collators. They put together the data. They actually um, create uh, proof of state. They create what we're, what we're going to talk about, a Merkle tree, which is essentially, um, it ends up a, a structure that can be validated. It, this, the chain, uh, they, they have all, you know, the processes here. And the validators and the uh, collators kind of work together to validate this this tree that's being put together, uh, these trees being put together, and eventually uh, tr the blocks, uh, you have the blocks created and you have the um, nomination process and, uh, and the valid, I mean, sorry, you have the, the validation process where two-thirds have to reach. Let's talk about it because I don't think I've been very clear. So the first of all, let's start with the relay chain. This is the connection between all these these um, validative parachain um, items. Um, so what happens is the blocks start there, created by the collators, they go through this what they call state transitions and um, end up um, on the parachain and after a significant amount of validation the block is created that goes to the relay chain. Once it's been, and that's not the end of the validation, once it's gone through what they call a grace period uh, that's when you have the have to have the two-thirds agreement. So the parachain, uh, again, they, they could be separate independent chains. They could be separate independent chains and they're processed in a parallel fashion that um, creates scalability. So what we're doing with, um, it holds, the parachain holds this, this tree structure there's a set of key value pairs, um, so let's say a count number and the number, and they go, th and the way a Merkle tree l works is you start with the leaves that have the count number and then the number, and what ends up happening is those leaves are hashed, go through a hash. Now what a hash does, if you briefly, to take this, and this is how this you see hashes throughout blockchain. Bitcoin uses a hash, and what ends up happening is they hash the the, the leaf, and then the parallel leaves hashes are append are um, concatenated and hashed again. Eventually, you have one leaf, and that is your root, um, and this structure is called a Merkle tree. Now according to 
uh, Wikipedia in cryptography and computer science. A hash tree, a Merkle tree, is a tree in which every leaf node is labeled with a cryptographic hash of a data block, and every non-leaf node is labeled with the cryptographic la hash of the labels of the child nodes. Hash trees allow efficient and secure ver verification of the contents of large data structures. So that's the whole point of the Merkle tree, is it allows the validators to, you know, the collaborators construct this thing, this Merkle tree, and it goes through these processes, ends up at the validators. The validators and the collaborators um, kind of work to get. Remember, if you look at the the notes I have here, the collaborators put together the data and they perform the state transition proofs. The validators validate the proofs, and that's one of one of the mechanisms of security. So, as you know, the this is very sim the Merkle trees you also see in Ethereum, and the um, the proof of the using the Merkle trees to do a proof of these state transitions, if you will. Note that the the the, 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 the collaborators and the valleys do work together. So a validator is assigned to a parachain, um, works with the collaborators, and there's a connection to the there's a connection between the validator and assigned collaborator. The collaborators create the block, the state and state transition proofs, and the validators then validate that block with their associated proofs. And um, so, like I said, once the you have the block that goes on the relay chain, um, the there are additional checks performed goes on the relay chain, and when it's been there and uh, through some grace period, they then uh, just like you need several before it on. Um, uh, the Bitcoin uh, blockchain, with like as with the the Bitcoin blockchain, when the uh, once once it had once the you have several the the items been on the block in the in the block for several. Um, Transition. There are additional blocks, you know, that put that are added to chain. Then you can be satisfied it's a valid block. Well, it's a similar thing here. Um, once it's been through this grace period, then they can do the two thirds, as opposed to 51% with um, Bitcoin, and you know, officially make it a what they call a finalized block. So basically, this is a fairly involved process. Uh, but it is a lot, uh, it, it does provide some nice security in terms of validation, and as you can see, it's fairly uh, involved here. So hopefully you've gotten something out of this. Um, I'm trying to explain something that's uh, a bit complex and um, something that um, is... Uh, not just a, is not just a bit complex, but involves um, you know multiple steps. And so let me show you let me show you a few things that um, might clarify. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is a Merkle tree, and I think this will clarify that. So you have your data blocks, you have a hash, and so this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. They, ha they are appended and hashed, appended and hashed, and then again appended and hashed, and this is how you have your um, top hash, your main uh, Block. This is this is the finalized uh, root. So if 
So you can see your data coming in, which could be, let's say, account and number. Again, they're key value pairs. And finally, I would like to explain state transitions. So in Polkadot, it is the logic to decide, if you will, if a state should be toggled. Each parachain, uh, and this comes from the article, has its own state. So the state would be, for example, equivalent, similar to, let's say you have a state of a blockchain in, in um, uh, Bitcoin. It has a certain state each block is validated or being validated, so you have a certain state. The relay chain links all these into one state, a state of states, if you will, which they call, they call sharding. And so you have one state of the blockchain. And sharding is, like I had mentioned, the data is broken up and and for more efficiency, and it's pulled together to uh, create your um, your full data. So you may have, for example, all if if you're looking at a database, uh, you may have all the letters A to F on in in one shard and. F to L on another, and you know, and it's usually balanced by the amount of data. So the work is split up. This is a similar thing. The relay chain brings the whole shard together, and all these shards together to get your full um, verified relay chain. So. Hopefully, I've done an okay job in explaining this. This is, like I said, rather involved, and um, we may have to revisit this, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of the mechanisms involved uh, with uh, the polka dot network. And like I said, the Merkle trees and this is, um, and this kind of validation is also used in Ethereum. So, so it's a very it's a standard uh, algorithm, a standard data structure, although a fairly involved one. Now, I want to point out before I finish, I want to point out one other thing about hashes. One of the great things about hashes in terms of scalability is hashes. When you hash something, it and if you've looked at um, uh, Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin blockchain, you, you've, they've talked about hashes and the SHA, I think it's SHA-256. So one great thing about a hash is, in addition to the fact um, with security that you can't go take a hash and then go back to the original data, is it always comes out with the same amount of, uh, the same size output. So what, the, what that means is if you have more data that you put into the hashing function, you're still going to get the same thing that, out of it. Now obviously, you know, you know you, there is sometimes occasionally an issue of collision where you have two different things that hash to the same thing. That generally does not happen very often, so it's not a big issue. But um, it does allow for great efficiency. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful, uh, especially if you've been trying to look at the uh, polka dot documentation. And uh, I will speak to you next time.